As for apartments, most of what you will probably hear about when researching soundproofing for a room in an apartment has to do with adding stuff with lots of soft absorbent materials like couches, rugs, acoustic panels, etc. in an attempt to absorb the noise after it's already entered the space. Now I'm not saying this isn't useful, but it mostly just cleans up the sound and reduces the echo effect of a room with nothing but hard solid surfaces. You're still going to hear the full force of the sound wave after it initially penetrates the partition. With that in mind, people often use the term soundproofing incorrectly, referring mostly to sound absorption as it relates to the use of soft materials. Soundproofing is more correctly associated with sound isolation, which has more to do with unbroken barriers of heavy material to deflect the sound waves back at the source, as well as utilizing principles like decoupling and damping, as mentioned in previous videos. So the big question is, how do you soundproof a wall, floor, or ceiling that you're essentially not allowed to soundproof in this way because landlords have rules and can't afford the expensive renovations involved with actual soundproofing or are just cheap and apathetic to the problems associated with crappy apartment partitions? Well, that depends on the degree to which the sound is intrusive as well as what you're willing to sacrifice to reduce it. Apartments have an implied clause in the lease called the Covenant of Quiet Enjoyment which can protect against a variety of intrusions, extreme noise being one of them. For typical noise that one would be expected to endure in an apartment situation, however, it may not apply, and I've heard of situations where a tenant and landlord will go in half and half on extra soundproofing costs. However, these videos have more to do with physical soundproofing, so I'd rather stay away from the legal stuff. If you are having trouble with impact noise above you, See if you can get your landlord to install carpet with a thick, dense, rebond carpet padding. This is something that landlords frequently agree to as it has been a huge issue for many apartment tenants. In some locations, it's actually law that a certain percentage of the floor in every room above the first story should be covered with carpet or rugs. If vibration is coming from pipes in the wall, definitely talk to the landlord because this stuff shouldn't be banging around in the walls or floors anyway. It's begging to eventually break and cost the landlord money regardless. If vibration is coming up through the floor from low frequency traffic, for example, you can create pockets of anti-vibration here and there so that the vibration won't be as much of a bother in those areas. For example, put thick neoprene anti-vibration padding under couch legs, under desk and chair of a workstation, and particularly under bed legs. You'll still be able to hear the sound, but you won't have to feel the vibrations. For ambient noise, you will probably be reduced to earplugs and or headphones. The over-the-ear type accomplish the best isolation, and active noise cancellation is good for low-frequency noise like that from heavy trucks. Ambient noise coming from a window is best mitigated with a removable window plug. Curtains backed with mass-loaded vinyl, MLV, can also work, but whatever soundproofing you add really should seal up air tight like a window plug for maximum effect. All in all, soundproofing is isolation. Isolation from the source which is radiating sound. If you are in situations at home with prolonged exposure to distracting noise, an enclosed isolated space to sleep and or work in when necessary is one of the only few options that wouldn't require the use of headphones or earplugs to block out the noise. A professional isolation booth slash chamber would ideally be double walled and airtight with the exception of ventilation which would need to be dead vented, i.e. soundproof, using one of the methods described earlier. These booths are largely used for recording purposes though more and more lately for sleep and work. An isolation booth can be constructed by a layman with only basic knowledge of soundproofing, though you'll need to be at least a little crafty slash handy. One option that a lot of people can accomplish would be to surround a bed frame with a large curtain containing mass-loaded vinyl, just as described in one of the window curtain treatments earlier. For better performance, one could also place magnetic strips along the curtain and bed frame so that the curtain sealed up airtight, though you'd need to create and utilize at least a couple crude dead vents with small fans to force air in and out. Fans will likely make noise, so place them at the outside facing section of the vents, unless you'd rather use them as white noise. 
Anti-vibration pads should also be placed between the bed legs and the floor, and a second sound barrier of some kind placed under the mattress. Bear in mind that MLV is around $5 or so per square foot the last time I checked, so it can get expensive very quickly. A much cheaper option would be to use large inexpensive area rugs in place of MLV. It won't be nearly as good, but it's better than a simple fabric curtain, and the rugs can always be double layered. The more effective approach that requires more skill and tools, that's also much less expensive than buying several yards of mass loaded vinyl, would be to build individual panels out of common building materials like drywall, concrete board, or OSB, bring them into the room one piece at a time, and attach them together with a frame to make the booth. It should also be stated that although the weight and thickness of the panels can be increased for better sound isolation, you have to be careful how much weight you are ultimately going to put on the floor, especially if you're not on ground level. If weight is not a huge factor, the panels can be made of two or three layers of wood or drywall sandwiching damping compound for better soundproofing. For a double walled chamber, just build a second chamber around the previous one, which will give you much better soundproofing. The more inches of airspace you can put in between the first and second chambers, the better the effect. However you build it, the things should be easily assembled and disassembled. 